afternoon, Mr. Ramchandran. Welcome to the Heritage Center and to this oral history program. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, so, it's uh, very exciting that a uh, student from the first batch of uh, BTEC students at IIT Madras can participate in this. So, um, can you tell us how uh, you came to know about IIT when you were joining here? Yeah, sure, sure. Well, actually what happened, there was a small advertisement in Times of India, it seems. It seems, I said, because I, I don't remember having seen it, but my brother had seen it. My elder brother, who's two years and a few months older. Yes. And he was in Ahmedabad. I grew up in Ahmedabad. He was going to an engineering college in Ahmedabad. Yes. And uh, he said, uh, well, why don't you apply to IIT, Madras? Hmm. I said, okay. I mean, I, I told him at that time, most probably I won't get admitted anyway. <laughs> because, you know, in those days, there were IIT Kharagpur in Bombay. Yes. And um, there was a, a perception that, I mean, it's very difficult to get into it. Though I was, a, you know, fairly a good student and I used to get good marks in pre-university and all those places. But one doesn't know actually what yeah. is required to get That's into right. IIT. That's right. So I was just made a joke at him, okay, I'll, I'll send my papers, application, but uh, don't expect much out of it. <laughs> I told mm. him that. Mm. So that's how it happened. He told me. And, uh, and, and the truth is actually I had already been admitted to another engineering college in yeah. a place called Anand. Yes. That's where Amul Dairy is. That's right. That's not very far from Ahmedabad. Mm. But there was some problem there. So, because of that problem, I, I mean, that, that's a, a story by itself. Mm. And the students went on, if something was wrong in the mess, in the food. Mm. Uh, so, the, the students there went on strike. And we didn't know, suddenly we came to know there was a strike. We came home. We had already joined the college. We means another person also, a cousin of mine and myself. And then it turned out that uh, the college was closed. Campus, everybody was asked to go home. So, mm. we came home. Mm. And when we came home, after a couple, a couple of days, <clears throat> I got this uh, invitation yes. to come to IIT Madras and, you know, appear for an interview. Yes. Because before that, we had, I had already sent the mark sheet mm. of PUC, you know, pre-university mm. and mm. High, high school and all of that. Yes. So, that's how it happened. And then after the interview, the interview well, went very well. They were very happy with my interview and I got the admission. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, you uh, actually visited Chennai to um, participate in the interview. Right, right. right yeah, yeah. From Ahmedabad, yeah, yeah yes. that's correct, yeah. Though yeah. I have visited Chennai many times mm. because I have relatives here. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what, what was the interview process like? Who was there on the interview panel? Can you recollect, recollect anyone? Who I can't there? remember the names of, of the people, but there were certainly three people minimum, that much I remember. And uh, the content of the interview, that I remember, because there again, what happened is they were asking me, why do you, I mean, uh, what is your father? In those days, I don't know how it is today, it was very common to ask, what is your father doing, mm. you know, because uh, very often the children followed the profession of the father. Yes. That was the, or at least they want to find out, is this a doctor's family or a lawyer's family, whatever. Yes. So now, my, I told him my father is in the textiles mills, because he was an executive in textile mills yes. in Ahmedabad. The Ahmedabad was full of textile mills in those days. Mm. So, then they immediately asked me, do you know how, to, how a cloth is made? Mm. You know, for, if you start from cotton, mm. how a cloth is made. Yes. Now, it so happens that uh, I had, I have visited my father's textile mills. You know, he was working in a, a group of textile mills, very big ones, with, they had seven textile mills. Mm. And my dad was uh, responsible for the, what is known as spinning department. Mm. You must be familiar with the different departments. In. So, uh, he was responsible for the spinning department for two textile mills. And, uh, Whenever we had guests in our house from any place, uh, he would take them to the uh, textile mm -hmm. mills to just to show them yes. what a textile mill looks That's like. Right. So, th there was somebody who had come to our family, my, actually my uncle, my mother's younger brother from Chennai. Yeah. So, uh, he, he was taken, asked, he, he wanted to see the textile mill, so I went along with him. Mm. So, my dad explained everything and I was listening. So, I carefully we listened to everything and I understood everything because it was... I mean, he, he explained very well, clearly. So, when I came for the interview, they asked this question, how do you go from raw cotton mm. to cloth and then the final product which is sold in the, in the shop. Mm. So, I explained to them all the steps. They were actually very amazed that uh, I went into such level of detail. And I think that had to do with uh, the fact that I had visited the textile mills uh, just about a month earlier or so. Mm. And maybe it is destiny, yeah, yes. that helped. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. They were very impressed actually that uh, somebody is like 16 year old yes. could tell that that level of detail. Hmm. How you go from cotton, raw cotton, you know, which you get from the fields, That's and right. then you have to clean it, hmm. and then you have to spin it, and you name it, you know, hmm. until you get the cloth, you bleach it, and then you dye it. Right. And so, I, mean, I think that that actually d did the trick hmm. because my marks were anyway good. You know, I was uh, you, I was a top ranker in uh, in the college along with my cousin. Both of us were first and second all the time, you know. So, uh, and the university marks were also good. Uh, I mean, apart from the fact that in the college marks, we had good marks. So, the, the marks were not an issue because they, I suppose in, in, in that uh, year, they took from each university students who were kind of top mm. students because there was no other common exam. So, whether right. it is Tamil Nadu or Calcutta or wherever, they had yes. to get students from the good universities and those who had the top marks and uh, certainly I was one of them mm. and then that helped plus the interview. Yeah. Mm. That's how it happened. Right. And you, uh, once you joined here, yeah. it was uh, before the inauguration of the institute is what I understand from the records yeah. because yeah. the official inauguration was on 31st July, yep. but you joined here for earlier to yeah. enter the hostel and classes. Yeah, uh, we went to Saida Pet Hostel, yes. of course. You, yeah. were, you were in Saida Pet Hostel. Because the first two years, as you said, yes. of the first batch, we were there. Yes. Yeah. Do you have any recollections of that hostel and that uh, days you spent there? Well, the main, most the important recollections I have is that we had to walk a long distance to come here. Um, but, and then, of course, that uh, it was a it was a canteen where we could make easily friends. Yeah? And people always try to interact and find out who you are, where are you coming from. So, it was a very uh, a cozy uh, uh, hostel. So that rooms were close to each other and people tended to, you know, after they come, we had classes, we get, excuse me, we came home or we came back to the hostel, uh, we had a snacks, usually there were some snacks mm -hmm. and then, you know, don't, you don't start studying immediately, uh, you, right. usually you take a shower also, but uh, about 10, 15 minutes or half an hour, we chit chat with, with people on there. Yes. And the whole uh, layout of the hostel that facilitated this interaction. I see. Yeah, and then of course there was also a table tennis uh, table in, 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 uh, I don't know, maybe there was also carom. So there were some places where you could make friends. Mm. So it was, it was actually a nice hostel, except of course there were two persons in each room. Yes. Yeah, which is not a bad thing, but we were, uh, 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 later when we came to Kaveri Hostel, each one was given a separate room. Separate room. Yeah, yeah. So the, mm. And uh, yeah, I had a nice roommate. He was from Madurai also, your town. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. Mr. Amadachari. Not Amadachari, but another person, person called Venkata Pattabhi Raman. I he see. was in metallurgy. I see. L. Venkata Pattabhi Raman, metallurgy mm. student. Mm. And he he knew Amadachari before coming here. And yes. they knew each other. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. So Amadachari was also a top student from Madurai mm. when he came. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you mentioned that you actually walked from Saidapet to IIT. Yeah. Uh, well, classes would have been in the AC Tech College, weren't they, in the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, quite some time that you walked. Yeah, yeah. Pro I can't sun. even remember. It might and have been 25, 30 minutes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And but I think we had to cross, uh, cross the Adaya River. Yes. Somewhere, it's a small bridge, walking bridge is also there. Mm. Yeah. I haven't been there recently, incidentally, but that's what I think there is one. Is it true that you also walked back for lunch and then returned for classes? Uh, is that how it worked? I can't remember. Mm. That part I can't remember. Right. But I, what I do know is there was more than one hour of lunch break. Mm. Um, I think about one and a half hours. Yes. If I don't remember, if I am, if I am recollect correct, certainly after coming to Kaveri Hostel, yes, it was the classes were from seven thirty to eleven thirty or eleven forty-five, and afterwards it would start at one fifteen or one thirty mm. to four thirty. Yes. Therefore, there was more than one hour gap yes. for the lunch. And yes. maybe we did go because uh, th otherwise we would not have had lunch. Uh, I mean, we yes. did not. Oh, yeah. He, it must have happened that way. Hmm. Now that you are. Because we were not given any uh, lunch boxes or anything. Yes. So we had to go back. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Because there were no lunch boxes packed or anything like that. Right. Um, uh, who were your instructors then and uh, what classes did you have in the first year? And, and first the year, year we had maths. Yes. Uh, I think we had physics. 
There was a workshop, you know, a fitting. Yes. I, yes. I didn't like it at all, incidentally. <laughs> Most people didn't. Mm -hmm. If you're not a mechanic, if you didn't want to take mechanical engineering, yes, I always already then I thought it was a waste of my time. <laughs> yes, yes, because I used to also get blisters. That's right. See, my hand is very soft even today, mm -hmm. and at that time even softer. So you know, when you do that, yes, yeah, I was a very um, lean person. Mm -hmm. You know, I I didn't have the strength to do those things. Yes, and there is no allowance made for a weak student or a good a strong student. Right, you have to do it. <laughs> Everyone does. <laughs> Everybody. <it. laughs> That's right. And I was not actually. I was unfit for that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, to be very honest, um, yeah. So there was this fitting workshop, and then there was. I think. Eh, I think there was a drafting uh, class. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was in the first year or second year, but yes. certainly it was uh, in one of the two years. Mm -hmm. Drafting, fitting. Uh, I think English also was there, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, maths was there. Physics was there. Yes. I think chemistry also. There were no engineering courses. It had not yet mm. started. Right. Yeah, that started from the second year. To, so, to the best of my re recollection, right. memory. I, th I think no engineering courses were offered at that mm. time yet. Did, yeah. did you have practical sessions in laboratories? Uh, in uh, I think in physics and, and physics. in physics and chemistry we did. Yeah, mm. yeah. Those were labs also in AC College of Technology. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, no, yeah, they were. I'm sure they were. Mm. Uh, yes, because because we had physics and chemistry, I'm kind of inferring. I'm, yes. But and I also know that I was I now remember in, uh, where which lab I was standing and all that. But I, I'm not hundred percent sure whether it was in the first year or second year. But I think it was in the first year. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and your classmates, you know, who who are they and uh, who are your closest friends? Well, it, even now it is uh, the same friends which I had now were also my closest friends then. Yes. So Kotis Varan. Yes. Is one of them. Then uh, Mahadevan, uh, Srinivasan, uh, Amutacharya, I knew a little bit, but uh, at that time he was not one of my closest friends. There is another person called P.K. Prabhakaran. Mm. Ha have you done an interview with him? No. No. He's, a, he's also in civil engineering. Mm. He was in civil engineering. But he was later at Kavari Hostel on, on my same corridor, mm. some three mm. rooms further away. Mm. So he became a, a good friend of mine. Yes. But the closest were Kotis friends. Mahadevan, Srinivasan, another person called Mohan. Mm. I think he's now in France. Mm. Uh, there was another person, no, at that, not in the first year. In the first year, I was not very close to another person called Iswaran. Mm. He, he, he is also an electrical engineering student. But um, in the first year, I didn't know him so well. Yeah. Because when we joined electrical engineering together mm. in the third year, since then, from that time onwards, he was also a close friend. Mm. First year, like I'm just trying to think who was who else was there. These were very close. Mohan, Kotiswaran, Srinivasan, Mahadevan. Oh yeah, of course, Patabi Ravan, who was my roommate. Your roommate. Roommate. Uh, I can't remember now this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another point is I was a um, I was a little bit of an introvert. I was a shy person. I was not like, you know, some people are, you know, bursting with the you know, energy and they will start talking and interacting. That I do now today. <laughs> today I interact with a child of five to hundred. Mm. But uh, in those days I was, I was an introvert. Mm. So I didn't have that many friends in the first year. Yes. There might have been another couple of, or two or three, but now I can't remember the names. Mm -hmm. But these were definitely closest, what I mentioned, yeah. Yes. Uh, and so this went on for two years, this uh, system of classes yeah. in AC Tech, workshop nearby. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Now, uh, do you have recollections of uh, Professor Sengupto uh, from those days? Yeah. Um, the director. We didn't have too many interactions. That was my regret, actually. Hmm. Uh, he did not have too many interactions with the students, like every three months or any such thing. What we do know is he was a... Uh, he, he came with a reputation that he's a very systematic person mm -hmm. and he's a good administrator. Yes. And uh, he's also very strict coming from the, you know, services army. I, I don't know if there was an army or air force, but he is from the services. Actually, we have very little uh, information about his. Oh, uh, is that so? Uh, yes, okay. his career before he <laughs> but joined a, the VJTI at Bombay. But he was from the uh, services. He has worked in the services. Mm -hmm. um, he. He made speeches which were uh, 
to the point, you know. Um, but uh, I, if I may be honest, uh, the speeches which uh, inspired all of us was that of Natarajan. Natarajan, the registrar. I mean, he was just too good. Mm. So the, the speeches which always stayed with us yes. were those of R. Natarajan. Mm. And Mr. Sengupta, he was all to the point, business-like, whatever yeah. needed to be said, yes. he would say it. Yes. Whereas Natarajan would digress a little bit, make, make a story, yes. and it would be a humorous one. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So it was always great to listen to him. Right. Yeah. And his command of the English language, I have, mm. I have met few people like him in my life mm. who can speak so well. Uh, Mr. Regi uh, Mr. Natarajan was the registrar, yeah. so which is really an administrative uh, post. Yeah. But still, he knew a number of students and yeah. uh, met yeah. them. So, what did he? Uh, how did this happen? How did he come out to your hostel to talk with you? Or uh, actually, it didn't did happen too much with me. Yes. I don't know with with how many students he talked. Maybe the ones who were, uh, you know, I was in the kind of third or in, in my in the first two years, I was not one of the better students. Let's say. I was a average to above slightly. From third, I started doing very well because I, fin I finally I, f I finished with the first class. Mm. Yeah, so, from third year onwards, I started doing much better because there's a more focus on my own field of studies. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether he uh, spoke with many students. Maybe he might have. Uh, or maybe also that he did it at a time when I, I was gone, either I was playing some somewhere. Mm. So I've seen him maybe one or two times in the hostel, but. Uh, uh, he never had a chat with me, let's put it that way. Mm. So, maybe um, he has had a chat with people like Koti Swaran or Srinivasan, it might have been. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. You, you had a, a warden for your hostel. Yes, yes. Uh, do you know? What I think uh, for Kaveri it was uh, yes. at least the first year, yes. uh, the head of the department of uh, chemical, uh, chemical engineering. Venkateswarlu. Yes. D. Venkateswarlu. Professor Venkateswarlu. Yes. Professor Venkateswarlu. Yes. Am I correct? Yes, that's because a, in my uh, as far as I remember, he was the warden for the first year of the Kaveri Hostel. Hmm. Whether he was for all the years that I studied, I can't remember. But certainly, first year, maybe even maybe in uh, two years, hmm. because we finished two years in uh, in Saidapet, Saida and yes. then we came here. Yes. So in the, in my third year of study, he was the warden, yes. and whether he was also in the fourth year of study, I don't remember. Hmm. Uh, what was um, the Academic pressure, like what, what, how many exams did you have to write? And, uh, I think they were about, uh, we didn't have a semester system. I think you must be knowing that. Yes, for, for you it was the annual Full system. Year, yes. annual year. And from beginning, so like, so from like July till the next May or June when the year ended, <coughs> probably we had two or three in between mm -hmm. and then a final exam. And uh, uh, there, there was a system of uh, surprise periodicals at some point. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah, but uh, there were not too many of those. Mm. There were some, and not in all subjects, mm. in some subjects. What I remember about uh, exams is, uh, because there were two or three tests in between, so the material was not for the whole year, but it was less and, you know, just like in the semester system also, uh, you have only half the material yes. if you take a full course for two semesters. So, I, I didn't find the material as, a, as such too much or anything, but you find sometimes a topic which you don't understand so well. So, I can't remember uh, specifically that there was excessive pressure because of the material, but sometimes a, a, a certain topic in a subject was difficult. Mm. And that required additional study or consultation hmm. with either another uh, peer, another student, or you have to go to the uh, professor or lecturer and then you know have a separate discussion on that. Yes. But I, I don't particularly remember that I had a problem with the volume of study that had to be done. Hmm. And anyway, I used to wake up very early. I used to wake up at four o'clock or so, four four thirty. Yes. To study for ah, exams. I see. You know. I see. Uh, and then one week or two weeks in advance. I would start waking up early, hmm. so that it, some extra hours were made available. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was a, compared to some other students, and one of my um, one of the students in my corridor made a, a joke actually when I came uh, when we came for the Golden Jubilee celebrations. Yes. Uh, I didn't know that, that I was doing it, but he noticed it that I was one of those who slept very early. By ten ten thirty, my, there were no lights in my room, hmm. but. 
he also knew that I was an early riser by 4, 4, 3. Whereas the other students, they woke up a bit late and studied till midnight. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's a question of you know, choice, what you do. I was trained at home, uh, you know, in, by my parents to wake up early. Because yes. that's when the brain is fresh mm. after some rest. Mm. So. Yes. But there are others who are night, uh, they like to spe uh, study more at night. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's very person dependent. Right. And that man made a joke, that student. Oh, Ra Ramchandran, you are the great guy who slept at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what is so great about I used to wake up early. Yes. <laughs> I compensated. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, yeah. When I was in the Golden Jubilee, he was, yeah. he was, he was always a humorous person. Mm -hmm. There were two, three rooms away. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, going on a different tack, what yeah. was the kind of fees that students had to pay? In those 300. Days? 300 for Per year. Uh, per year? Very, very yes. Peanuts. For the kind of study we did. That's it. Th yeah. 300 in all. That's it, yeah. Right. Yeah. And did you have to have hostel fees to be paid or uh, do you know how much that was about this? Tuition was 300 rupees. Yes. Whether the 300 became more in the fifth year, I can't remember. Yes. It might have slightly increased, but nothing dramatic. Mm -hmm. It was really very, very economical. That's right. And uh, hostel... What I remember is my dad used to send f the first one or two years 50 rupees a month. Yes. And later I was getting 75 rupees per month. And I can't remember that I paid anything for the hostel. Mm. I, uh, those were, that money was meant for the, you know, mess, canteen and a little bit of pocket money to go to a movie or going out yes. and take, uh, eat in a restaurant or something. Yes. But I can't remember that there was any hostel fees. Mm. Maybe, maybe you know also. Well, it subsequently, be in, my, in my period, in the yeah. 80s, we did have a separate hostel yeah. uh, bill. Okay. And we, that was based on a, a daily rate. Uh, for per day would be... Uh, um, uh, Five rupees or so. In my time, by the 80s, it was 12 rupees or so. Per, Sorry. Per, uh, uh, no, you're right. It was about 8 rupees. Uh, but I, 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 don't, I don't believe I paid any hostel fees. Mm. No. And but maybe some of my classmates will yes. confirm yes. whether I'm right or wrong. Yes. Yeah. In so far as I remember, I have not paid any hostel fees. Ah, I see. Yeah. Right. No, the, the whole thing was very, very economical, the studies. You know. mm. I think it's all government of India money. That's true. <laughs> Taxpayers' yes. money. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, um, do you have uh, recollections of the, the inaugural, inauguration of the institute, the 31st July, when it was formally... Uh, started. Regretfully, no. Hmm. I can't remember. No. I don't have not the slightest idea what happened in that time. It's more yes. than 55 years ago. That's right. Uh, you know, some people might have remembered, but I didn't. Hmm. I don't even remember who did it actually. Hmm. Lal Badr Shastri had come? Uh, 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 Humayun uh, Kabir. I'm sorry? Humayun Kabir? Humayun Kabir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yesterday I had seen it in the photos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, maybe I remember Humayun Kabir, but I can't remember anything of that event. Apparently, yeah. a foundation stone was laid. Yeah. We have that stone now at the Heritage Center. Okay. Uh, on display well, here. Now, once you mention Humayun Kabir, I, I, I kind of remember that something like that I have attended. Mm. But what I can't remember is what exactly happened. Yes. You know, the, the rest of the proceedings, I don't remember. Mm. Mm. Um, so then, in 1961, according to our records, the first buildings on uh, uh, campus were opened right. for, uh, you know, for teaching or for staying in. Yeah. So uh, the, you went to Kaveri uh, Hostel. Hostel. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, of course, made uh, moving to classes and very back easy. much easier. Much easier. Yes. yes. Very comfortable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, according to what we know, the first classes were all held in the building sciences yes, block, what is correct. today the civil SB, engineering. Yes, the yeah. civil engineering yeah, department. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm. But, but very soon after, thereafter, the electrical engineering department was also ready. Whether it is three months, six months or one year, I don't know. Yes. But I don't believe it's more than a year. Yes. Within a year or so, electrical engineering department, that's where my classes were. Mm. That came up. Yeah. But whether it signs of uh, plenty of construction going on because the, um, everything was trying to be built yeah, in a short yeah, period. Yeah, do you yeah. have, uh, do you remember that? The, the impression I carried then and even now is it could have been faster. Let's put it that way. Mm. I, got, I had that impression and I don't know what the, what the constraints were, what the limitations mm. were. But uh, the, the impression I did get is that uh, it could have been faster. 
But I'm sure there were reasons, you know, there were some constraints and uh, I'm not uh, familiar with them. I, I recollect uh, seeing uh, there was a shortage of cement possibly or Could have, Yeah, yeah, in those days, that is, point, yes. in those days, oh yeah, yes. now that you mentioned, yeah, everything was in shortage. Hmm. And cement, cement was all allocated, literally, you know. I see. Yeah, by the government, you know, and uh, that might have been a reason. Hmm. Yeah. And I might have remembered, I might have known that at that time, yes. but now I have forgotten. Hmm. But. Uh, I still felt, oh yeah, how long is it going to take, you know, yes. uh, like that, yeah. Mm. But uh, as I said, you know, the reason it ha took more time, there must have been good reasons for it. Mm. We just as students didn't know them, all of them. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 that's right. Uh, well, we have, we see uh, what it was to be a student from writings that you, your colleagues have, uh, your batchmates have written in the annual number which you see in front of you and campus yeah. times and so on. So, we understand that there was a strong emphasis on extracurricular activities. Um, yeah, I mean there were facilities one, provided. From day one, yes. Yeah. There were good facilities provided. Yes. I mean uh, like, you know, table tennis and then uh, tennicoit. Yes. Uh, tennicoit is something very unique to Tamil Nadu actually. Mm -hmm. I never played it. I came from Gujarat. Yes. And then uh, ball badminton. Ball badminton is also very unique to Tamil Nadu. Uh, I have never played it before and even here I didn't play after coming because uh, that ball is coming at such a high speed you have to have a you know you should play it for a long time before you get the hang of it but I was playing shuttle mm. shuttle clock I could play I could play table tennis I even played cricket mm. uh, I played uh, uh, carom yes uh, I think chess if I'm not mistaken uh, what else? no I, we were actually quite busy with the uh, games so, after we came, it, there was more opportunities for relaxation. Mm. So, I mean, if you don't like, uh, uh, let's say, uh, badminton, but you like tennicoit. Yes. There, there were co courts for tennicoit. And um, I, I, I think there were later or even courts for tennis. But when they came, I don't remember. <clears throat> I was never, I never played tennis. So, but cricket ground was there and uh, we played cricket. Koti used to play. But these Koti's located Koti. around the Kaveri hostel? Yeah, not too far away. No, not Ko Kaveri hostel, but not too far away from where we are listing. Exactly where I forgot now. Yes. Yeah. In fact, uh, very many evenings I played tennicoid with Srinivasan, yes. with uh, Mahadevan. That's also a way of making friends. That's right. Oh, yeah, there was another person called B. Gopalakrishnan. Hmm. He's from civil engineering. He was a very close friend of hmm. mine. Yeah. Hmm. Even, uh, I, I, he might have become friend even in the first year. Hmm. Very nice person, very decent gentleman. Even in those days also, <laughs> one of the most decent persons I met. Yeah. Uh, there, there was uh, more competitive sports as well, in the sense that um, there were inter-IIT sports coming right, up. Right, right. So, d did you represent the institute? Uh, I was not good in any of them to be able to do that. Uh, you know, like table tennis I played for fun, yes. but the real good ones were others. Like Srinivas Nageshwar. Yes. And, and also S. Gopalakrishnan, mm -hmm. they were good in table tennis. Yes. Uh, in cricket, I was, uh, I played a match, inter-class match. Yes. I think my class against another class. Yes. But nothing against an, another IIT. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, for another, to play against another IIT, you have to choose everybody who is already available in the, all the classes of IIT. Yes. Not just my class, yes. but all the years. That's right. And then you get maybe about five, six hundred students mm -hmm. or more, mm -hmm. and they are much better players. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was a sportsman by name uh, Dominic. Uh, yeah, he Jacob was very Dominic. good. He was very good yes. at hockey. Right. I think he was uh, good in hockey and also in uh, uh, ball badminton. He was an amazing player, mm -hmm. ball badminton. Mm -hmm. He's right now in the US. Yeah. Also, yeah. again, a very nice person. Yeah. When we understand he was uh, 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 an all-rounder, a sportsman. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, ball badminton, uh, what else he played? Maybe the normal badminton also. Yes. But I can't remember if he played cricket. That I don't know. Yeah, hockey, yes, he played. Hockey. I think yes. so, yeah. Right. There was also a hockey team. Mm. There was another person called Chandy. Chandy. Mm. But he's a one class, uh, one batch lower. Yes. He was uh, very good in hockey. Mm. Yeah. And um, uh, IIT Madras, of course, was started with German assistance. Yeah. So, uh, we know that there were German uh, technicians and uh, Professor. professors here yeah. on uh, campus. So, do you have recollections of their classes or interacting with them? Well, of course, nobody forgets uh, Dr. Koch. 
K O C H. Yes. Yes. Now, I have to be, if I may be very frank and honest about it, I had difficulty in following every German professor. Mm. And the reason was, it may sound as if I'm blaming somebody else, but uh, they were not be able to express the, their thoughts mm. in English in a proper way. Mm. And uh, uh, because I, ha I did very well in nearly all courses taught by Indian professors. But I had difficulty in following the German professors. Right. I was. I had difficulty also to take notes, mm. and they did not uh, have a, a specific textbook, which they say, okay, this is what you will find in that textbook. Go and take it. Mm. So they would sometimes give a handout, mm. you know, and it, those handouts would be also crisp and uh, s sort of uh, paraphrasing or summarizing, mm. not explaining in detail. Mm. So I was uh, one of those. Maybe I, uh, there were more students like me, but I certainly. I had a, a problem with any subject where I cannot have a proper textbook hmm. and where you have to learn only from the professor and if he himself doesn't explain very well hmm. and you cannot take very good notes, I was not able to take good notes also. So in that, in that area, Srinivasan and Mahadevan, they helped me. Hmm. You know, for, I would go to them and, and take the notes from them. Yes. They helped me. Uh, without those, that help, I would have had great difficulty. But the, uh, the difficulty I had was also that there were no textbooks which were said, okay, now you go and read this material in that particular textbook. Hmm. So I had, uh, I was kind of, and I, I think in one of those courses offered by them, I, did, I got an A or, no, I'm not sure if I got an S, I might have got an A, but in all, the others I got a B, I think mainly. Uh, in, from third year onwards, I got almost all subjects A and S. Hmm. But these were, these professors were mainly. S being the top grade. S being the top grade. Yeah. Yes. S was super or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I don't know what it is. The system is uh, different, is it today? Uh, uh, the system has changed. Yeah. A, there was A, B, there was A, uh, S, A, B, C. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. S was the highest. But from third year onwards, I think I got almost no Bs or very few. Hmm. But in the first two years, I had a couple. Uh, and that were also in, in the courses offered by the German professors. Certainly hmm. in those, I think. Maybe in one I got, might have got any, but I'm not, I don't remember. So a long time ago. Mm. So I, I don't, another thing is, there is another aspect to it. Uh, we were all children actually. I mean, we are, 17 year old is not really an adult. Hmm? When I joined it, I was 16 years and six months or something. Mm. So what happens is, uh, boys or girls of that age, some of them are already mature mm. to the point where they can, they come here to study. Yes. They know their duty as a student eh, and the, the promise they made to their parents that they will do their best and they are able to keep it hmm. and they were able to focus no matter how a professor uh, presents the material. Hmm. There are others who are a little bit more childlike. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. A little bit more like children. Um, you mean they need guidance? More guidance. No, they, their mind starts wandering. Ah, yes. Because uh, the material is at the, at not, not being explained in the manner that they can appreciate. Hmm. And then the mind starts wandering and they are not able to control it. They are not able to focus on what's going on. Mm -hmm. I was one of them. Mm -hmm. Because my mind would start wandering if the material presented was not clear and not in a manner that uh, uh, I would have liked. It did not hold your attention. It did not hold my attention. Yes. So that was my problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could have been and the combination of both. The way the material was and I was not mature maybe at that age. Hmm. Because uh, if I look at my career later, you know, I think if I look back, uh, I might have understood it better if I had focused on it more, if I had fo concentrated on it. But I was unable to do it. Yeah. Hmm. So, but I have nothing. I, I mean, I, I got through those uh, that period. But uh, those were the subjects which presented the maximum challenges for me. Yes. Not those uh, taught by Indian uh, professors. They were hmm. all for me straightforward. Hmm. Uh, were you involved in the NCC activities no, on campus? No, I was not. Mm. And um, um, the campus itself was, uh, of course, a different kind of campus because it was still so much of it was for forest and it yeah. had not been built upon. Yeah. So, uh, what do you re re recollect of the, that campus? Exactly what you said. Lot of forest, <coughs> hardly any buildings. Yes. And we had to walk a long distance to the main gate. Yes. To catch a bus. Or, or a taxi or whatever. Mm. So, but all those things never bothered us. You know, at that age, mm. we, 
we sort of took it all in our stride. Yes. Then we said, well, okay, we had to walk 40 minutes or 30 minutes, what is there, like that. Right. And uh, most of the thing is, of course, we saw a lot of deer even those days, mm. you know, spotted deer mm. and all of that. And uh, sometimes, of course, we would feel, oh, if the transportation was a bit better, like, you know, the more buses came or things like that. Buses mm. started coming, actually. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But uh, because of the weekend, we would always say in, inside, the, I never went out of the campus in, except on weekends. Mm. And also not all weekends because yeah. I have a lot of relatives in Chennai. Yes. So I used to go uh, maybe once in two weekends or so to stay with them. Yes. On a Friday night or so I would go. But some people went every weekend because like Kotiswar and his family is here. Yes. You know, he's from Chennai, so mm. his parents are also here. So he went every weekend. Whereas in my case, it's an uncle, aunt like that. So I didn't go every weekend. Mm. So, no, the main thing about the campus was it was very nice in terms of greenery, mm. uh, very quiet. Uh, uh, the roads were kind of still kacha roads. Mm. Uh, not all roads were still, you know, uh, paved the way yes. they are. They are now fantastic here. Mm. Everything is kept very well now. Also. Yes. yes. Uh, quality of maintenance is tri tip top right now. Yeah. But they actually just tracks there? Uh, mud yeah. tracks? Yeah. I mean mud tracks. Basically yes. majority, uh, at least half of them were mud tracks. Mm. And so when there was rain, yes. it was slushy. It was kind mm. of, yeah. Mm. Your trousers would get dirty and yes. things like that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but at, in that age, we don't bother about those things. That's right. Sometimes you'll get annoyed, but most, mostly not. And during the monsoons, it can rain quite it, heavily. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, sure, yeah. That's right. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, we, we still love to be here, let's put it that way. We enjoyed being That's right, here. yes. <laughs> um, was the city also remote in that sense in those days? Because uh, it has grown a lot now. Yeah. So it to it the, <coughs> go from here to where your relatives <coughs> were. Uh, well, it didn't take I time. would, I would, I had, <coughs> until the, I know the buses came and I was staying in the hostel, whether it was the fourth or fifth year, I can't remember, but uh, at least for one, not one year minimum, maybe one and a half, two years, I used to walk to the gate. Mm -hmm. And from there, I would take either an auto or a, or a taxi. Uh, those days, Madras taxis were also there. I mean, yes. I'm not talking about Uber or uh, uh, Ola, but the normal taxis. Hmm. Like in Bombay, they are their yellow top taxis. Yes. So here also we had those kind of taxis, but they were mostly ambassadors here. Hmm. Um, and while coming back also, I'd come home, I'd come right up to the hostel by taking a taxi. Hmm. So, I mean, uh, the, the accessibility was a bit of a problem, but you had to plan it, that's all. I mean, that means if you want to reach somewhere, you have to plan minimum one hour. Yes. Or one hour with 20 minutes. That's right. That's, I mean, so uh, apart from that, I mean, it's just a 30 minutes walk. I mean, in that age, you know, walk, uh, yes. nobody bothers about yes. 30 minutes walk, yeah. yeah. Mm. And of course, tele telephones were not there. far fewer, practically not there. No, it was not they there. They were not there. There was actually, the, in the warden's, um, there was a warden's office yes. in the ground floor of Kaveri. Mm. There was a telephone there. Mm. So, uh, I hardly made use, made use of it. Yes. Some people maybe, you know, made use of it, call their parents or if they were not going to come or they were dealing, I never made use of it. Mm. Yeah, but I know there was a telephone there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Assistant warden's office, I think that was. There yes. was also a person who was there on kind of 24 hours, hmm. like a caretaker or whatever. Uh, of course, uh, Dr. Venkateswarlu was not there all the time, but there was somebody else. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in 1962, the, uh, apparently the open air theater was inaugurated. Yes. yes. And uh, the first use it was uh, made of was to receive the uh, the German president, uh, President Lubke. Yeah, yeah. And it, was that uh, an, an incident that you remember? Very vaguely, hmm. very vaguely. Hmm. I can't uh, give too many details of that. But what you say, yeah, that part I remember, but not, not much more. Yes. No, no. Yeah. What I do remember about the open air theatre is we used to go there for movies. Yes, yes. They were screened. Yes. Uh, I think once a week or something like that. So hmm. We used to go there for that. Right. But uh, since I was not a very good sportsman, so I haven't played there inside the stadium or yes. anything, any game or something. Like that. And um, once you came to your departmental courses, uh, yeah, was it in the electrical sciences uh, building that you had yeah. your classes, all your classes? Yeah, all of them were in electrical. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the electrical engineering courses were there. Yes. But even then, at that time, we had some maths course, I think. And then we had to go to some other building. Mm. 
Uh, but all the electric engineering courses were in that building only. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so were the German test equipment and so on uh, Those are all installed fine. right there in the beginning? Yeah. I mean, they came in, you know, in, in, in a certain speed. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they were all available uh, when we needed them, I can't remember. But uh, they were coming uh, at, at regular intervals, mm -hmm. the equipment. I remember there is a, a high voltage lab Yes. In which the, you could have a electrical discharge by yes, just facing yes. the voltage. Yeah, well, yeah. Was that an early uh, piece of equipment? Was it there in your time? I think it was. Because there was a course on that, I mean, uh, mm. related to high voltage. But 100% I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah. Most probably it was, but right. I can't remember. Uh, who, who were your teachers from your department? Uh, can you name some of Professor them? Professor Sampath. Yes. He, as a matter of fact, I took, I was in heavy current, mm -hmm. where, you know, this transformers, high voltage, uh, and then this electric distribution, trans transmission yes. distribution, transformers, motors, electrical generation, all of that was taught. I was, unfortunately, I made the wrong choice. I should have taken electronics. That is what, it used to be called LC. LC. But Professor Sampath taught a course in third year on electronics and that inspired me to move, get out of my mm. whatever field I was in mm. to the field that I wanted to go yes. because his presentation was superb. Yes. And the same of uh, VGK Murthy, Professor mm. VGK Murthy. Yes. P. Venkatrao. I mean P. Venkatrao tended to be very fast. Mm. You have to be, you can't even, uh, you can't let your eye even blink. Mm. <laughs> 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 the speed at which he was talking mm -hmm. was amazing, mm -hmm. but it, still it was presented in a manner that uh, no problem. I mean, it was enjoyable to mm -hmm. learn from him. Yes. VGK Murthy was top class, mm -hmm. Sampath also, mm -hmm. and then some, Professor Sampath. And then, of course, there was Mr. Ramaswamy. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also uh, a B. Good, Ramaswamy. B. Ramaswamy. He yes. was a good uh, lecturer. He was, at that time was a lecturer and then he became an assistant professor. I, I believe he even became a head of the department at some mm. point. Mm. But uh, his presentation of the material was very good, but it was not like, uh, he was not an inspiring teacher. Mm. But he was a good, uh, he would give the technical details nicely. Whereas Sampath and Mr. Sampath, Professor Sampath and uh, Vijay Murthy and P. Venkatrao were inspiring speakers. Mm. Mm. I think they had that uh, skill, yes. which not everybody has. Mm. Uh, they mm. were gifted. Right. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, everybody enjoyed that. There is not a single person who will have a different opinion, mm. you know, on these, mm. on these professors across the board, you know. Yes. Yes. I didn't have, of course, courses of Professor Achutan because that was an LC mm. electronics. So I can't mm. say anything about it. But these three, I loved them actually. Yeah. yeah. So it's a pity I didn't keep yeah. in touch with them. So you, did you receive your uh, uh, degree here? To, yeah, yeah. Did you come here I to came, collect, yeah. I came to to collect, collect your degree? Yeah, yes. yeah, I came, came. Hmm. Uh, because when it was said that Dr. Radhakrishnan is going to come, yes. so I said that is a lifetime, once in a lifetime opportunity. Hmm. So I did come. Yeah. Only I came, my parents didn't come. Hmm. I think in some cases some pa the parents also came. Yes. But uh, in my case only right. I came. Yeah, yeah. So what happened after IIT? What did you uh, do? What well, actually, uh, I had no plans to go abroad or anything. Uh, I just took a job in uh, with Siemens. In uh, actually, there, there was a job, a very short job I took before I joined Siemens in a company which makes transformers in Bombay. But it it was uh, having a factory in the place where there's a lot of flooding at the time of rains. Hmm. I worked in that company for two weeks, and then I got an interview call from Siemens. Yes. And I was selected by Siemens, so I quit after two weeks. Mm. Uh, so my first job is actually of two weeks, and the next one is Siemens, uh, a bit more than one year. Uh, the idea was I was I was elected between uh, mar marketing people and the factory, so I had to uh, deal with customers, uh, their questions related to the factory. So I worked for one year in that Siemens and, and uh, company. Uh, you know that it's a German company. Yes. You know. But I was not happy because that it did not require any of my technical knowledge to be applied. Hmm. I did talk to my boss and after three months or six months, 
then I would like to go into, a, in, into another department where they do some design work, where there's yes. more engineering, uh, my engineering knowledge can be applied and used. He said, oh, yeah, we'll do it. But, uh, you know, uh, somewhere at that, around that time, my brother and I, my brother was very keen to go abroad. So he also stimulated me uh, to the U.S., to go to the U.S. and study there. Hmm. So I started applying for, the U, for going to the U.S. Hmm. And uh, so, uh, see, I, I, sta I started working maybe in the beginning of 64, March, April, May, I can't remember anymore. But then by the end of, by October, November 64, I was already busy applying for, you know, to go abroad, hmm. uh, to, may, only to the U.S. I did not apply to any other country, yes. like U.K. or so. Yes. And, uh, and that, the reason was also because uh, prof most of my professors in the electrical engineering department, they were all from the U.S. S Professor Sampath studied in uh, Stanford, yes. BGK Murthy in uh, University of Illinois. Hmm. So, uh, and uh, I felt, I also felt that uh, that might suit my uh, you know, character, hmm. that, that type of uh, courses offered there. Yes. UK, also UK takes longer to get a master's. US is, a, you know, you can do it in one year or one year and three, four months like hmm. that. Yes. UK usually two years. So, so I applied in the, at the end of 2000, uh, beginning of uh, 65, or maybe uh, by April, May, I had applied to several universities, three of them. And uh, I got admission in two. Uh, one of them, I think they didn't give me because uh, there was a time, at that time they were uh, asking us to take a GRE test. Yes. G and also an English language test. Mm. And uh, somehow I was, uh, I may be the only student who did that. I, I wrote to them that I feel that I, I'm from a very good institution, premier institution, IIT Madras, and uh, I explained to them because Americans might not know yes. what IIT is. Yes. And in those days, 65. I explained to them how, you know, it's a government of India initiative with the German government, blah, blah, blah. So my explanation of the IIT was probably one full page. Hmm. And then I also said, look, I have, a, these are my grades. And I feel that uh, uh, there is no reason for me to be tested again on, with a GRE. So I think the University of Illinois, they didn't accept my argument. Hmm. But Berkeley accepted it. Yeah. University of California, yes. Berkeley. All right. So I didn't do any GRE. Uh, and similarly, the English language test, uh, that was compulsory. Now, there also what I did is, I got, uh, uh, see, I have studied everything in English, even from my KG, in a, in a Christian school in yes. Ahmedabad. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, one year of college, pre-university in, in Ahmedabad, that was also everything in English. Then IIT was in English. So what I did is, I wrote to my uh, principal of the school, and the principal of the St. Xavier's College, where I did my PUC, mm -hmm. asking them for a testimonial, a certificate saying that I can understand English, I can speak English, and I'm very fluent, I'm fluent in English. Yes. And that I can follow a course in the US mm -hmm. without any difficulty. Mm -hmm. I, I send a request also to the head of the Department of Humanities here, IIT. Mm -hmm. There was a Krishnamurti, I think, one Mr. Krishnamurti. I yes. Think. Am I correct? Yes. Krishnamurti, he was also very good in English. Uh, I think it was Mr. Krishnamurti in my time. I, I remember the name, but... Yeah, uh, head yes. of the department. Yes. I, I requested I him saying, I even actually yes. told him what he has to write. I mm. said, please mention these things mm. in the mm. testimonial that uh, I have uh, studied everything in, in IIT in English and uh, my fluency is good enough to take, uh, to follow any course in any, any, any American university. Mm. He gave me a nice testimonial. And from Ahmedabad, I got out of two places that I requested, I got one. The other one, I, I don't know, they didn't reply, respond. Mm. I said, <coughs> I sent those two to Berkeley, to uh, all the three universities which applied. Berkeley accepted it. Mm. So I didn't take any <laughs> an English language test, which everybody else did. Yes. I didn't yeah. take the GRE also. So that was a very, it, it was a kind of a, uh, what I thought is in case they insist on it, I will still take it. But let me try it. Yes. Yeah. And if they insist, I can always take it. Right. So then I went abroad to the US, studied. I worked for one year. Uh, I did my MS in electrical engineering. And then I uh, started working in the chips industry. Yes. Uh, you're familiar with the chips industry, I'm sure. Yes. Um, it so happened that one of the courses that I was taking in Berkeley 
was taught by a visiting lecturer from the East Coast, mm. from Maryland, yes. and Berkeley is in, the, in California, West yes. Coast. So that gentleman, a, a, a Chinese actually, uh, he, when he finished the course, he g g asked all of us, uh, if those who want to come and work in that company on the East Coast, please come and see me. So I went there and, and two other Indians also went. And he gave us an application form and he signed it saying so that he can recognize when the application form comes there yes. that it has been given to his student by him. Hmm. So I filled it and sent it and then uh, I got, he off, uh, uh, asked me to come for an interview and I took a job. Well, I had a job in California also. Hmm. And most of my Berkeley friends, Indian friends, they chose not to get out of California. Hmm. They felt California is the, the best place to live. Hmm. And in Maryland, the winters can be severe. Yes. So he said, they even asked me, why are you going there? I was the only person who left. I said, no, because I like this man. This gentleman is a very experienced person. So I, I think I can learn more from him. Mm -hmm. Whereas in California, my, when I got a job with, in, in one company, and my, the person who might have been my boss or who would have been boss, was probably three, four years older than me. Mm -hmm. So me, he certainly was more knowledgeable in that field. But the one in the other company where I went to, he was at least 20 years more older than yes. me. And uh, he's extremely experienced. He was also, later I found out, I didn't know, it. when I took the job, I didn't know that he had already published 25 newspaper, uh, papers mm. in, in different uh, journals on mm. chips. He had 25 patents also, US patents. Mm. So, you know, I was lucky to go and work for somebody yes. who's so knowledgeable. Yes. So for me, it, it, it was not important to stay in California, but it was more important to go to somebody from whom I can learn. Yes. yes. So while I was uh, working there, then I went to Johns Hopkins University. There's a mm. university called Johns Hopkins. In, and there I took a, I did the evening course mm. and took a second man master's in management science. Mm. Because from my very young age, I wanted to go get into management, not mm. into, into research. Mm. I wanted to start in research, do some development work, but my aim was to go into senior executive mm. position. Because my dad was a senior executive in textile mills. And uh, I, I was sort of uh, wanted to emulate him. wanted to follow his, follow his yes. footsteps. Yeah. So I said a management degree would help. An MBA might also have helped, but this was slightly different. Mm. But it was still a management degree. So, and that helped me also later when I worked for Philips. Mm. So, so I, went, I worked in the US for about three and a half years. Mm. And then I came back to India with the intention to settle down. Yes. Uh, but it didn't, uh, I got married at that time. Uh, I didn't... Uh, after a few months in Ahmedabad, because that's where my parents were living, I got a job in Pune, a very short, uh, I mean, a job in a very small company, but they were assembling chips yes. and transistors, not mm -hmm. chips, mostly transistors. Mm -hmm. And they said they will start making chips sometime mm -hmm. in the future. Mm. But they didn't know what they were talking about, because to make chips, you need a, a lot of investment, which yeah. that company was not capable of doing. Mm. But I took the job and because I had nothing else to do and I didn't want to sit at home. And I said, okay, as a first job, I'll take it. Uh, and then I'll see further. I was also offered an opportunity by one gentleman to start a company mm. in Ahmedabad. Uh, in fact, uh, he was the managing director mm. of the company where my father was working. Mm. So, and he said that uh, I would like you to start a company. I'll do all the mm, negotiations with the Gujarat government or central government for the licenses and everything else. Mm. So you don't, you won't be bothered about all those bureaucratic matters. You just develop a product and then, uh, you know. But somehow I was not very comfortable being an entrepreneur. I don't think I'm an entrepreneur. I didn't feel I was an entrepreneur. Mm. I was more like a person who worked for a big company. So I didn't take that uh, opportunity. Mm. And then actually while I was working in the small company in Pune, I read an article in a, in a trade uh, magazine that Philips is going to start manufacturing chips mm, mm, in India, in mm, India. Mm. And so I sent my application to that uh, managing director of Philips India. Mm. So he's the biggest boss in Philips India. And then he called me for interview. And after the interview, the, I, was, I was told that, well, you seem to have the qualifications. And you, could, you will be the first employee, but uh, uh, you need to go to Holland for an interview mm. because we can't judge. They are not. They had no exposure to chips yes. technology. Yes. Yes. So I went to Holland for one week, 
uh, mm. for an interview and they selected me mm. and they said that uh, actually they told me you know, the management of Philips India is saying that they want you to be here for four years and then they want you back but we want you to be here in Holland forever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we do, your background is very suited for the work which we are doing here so we would like you to be in Holland but if you choose to go back after four years that's your decision so so I what I did is um, I, I, I did decide to come back to India because my my goal was to settle in India mm -hmm. So after three and a half years, uh, I decided, in, in Holland I decided, uh, I was working in the chips industry there in, with Philips. Uh, I want to go back to India. So I told them to give me uh, a job. And then Philips India, I wrote to the management of Philips India. They offered me a job in Pune mm. as a development manager, but in a different environment, not in the chips industry, but in an elect electronics equipment industry. Where you know uh, you must be knowing oscilloscopes, right? Yes. And digital multimeters. Yes. So if you want to measure voltage or current instead of analog with those needle, yes. there are digital multimeters. Yes. And then uh, audio systems. If you want to have a, a big conference hall hmm. and there you have to install a big audio system, professional type of thing. All those things were being done in Pune, and they wanted an R and D manager. Hmm. So Philips uh, in India, they said we are offering you that job. We cannot offer you anything in chips because the chips industry, uh, the license did not come. Yes. The government of India was putting so many conditions on Philips that Philips said we will not start a chips factory. Hmm. Your conditions are not acceptable. But I wanted to come back to India, so I decided that even if I don't want, if I don't get a job in chips in India, I want to be in India. So I came back, and so I came after four and a half years or four years and some months in Holland. Holland. I came back to India in Pune and I worked for five years and then, then the story changes a bit. After three years I got uh, very disappointed in, mm -hmm. with India. Mm -hmm. At that time there was an uh, emergency, there was all mm -hmm. kinds of unrest in India. Mm -hmm. It was not a pleasant time of, uh, in India mm -hmm. from uh, 75 to 80. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know I was also not very happy in the job because chips was my passion. Yes. And you have to yes. work in a field where you have a passion. And that equipment was okay, but uh, you know, it is just a job. You know, mm -hmm. you don't work only for a salary. You work for something more than a salary. Yes. And uh, I could not, uh, my father was also very highly technically professional. So he saw that I was not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So he said, no, you go back to Holland or to the US. You also worked in the US, but don't stay here. Yes. And I had a technical director in Philips. Uh, also a Tamilian, very nice person. Mm -hmm. He knew me because he had, during my stay in Holland, he was also there. Before he became a director on the board of Philips India, his name is Venkatraman, S. Venkatraman. He lives in Chennai. He's, he must be 87 now. Mm. Uh, Venkatraman said, Mr. Venkatraman said, Ram, you have done work in chips. Even though I was under him, of course there was one manager between me and him, is that you don't stay here, you go, go, go back to Holland. Mm -hmm. He even said that. And when my father said, and he also said, I went back for my parents actually, you know, because they were getting old. Then uh, my father said, no, no, don't stay for us, you know, because you have to think about yourself and your children. So it was not an easy decision to leave the country at that time, because I'm, first I was there for one year, uh, between Ho US and Holland, I was in India for one year, and then if, after going to Holland, I came back to India for five years yes. with a very clear intent to stay in India, but it didn't work out. Mm. And uh, maybe I could, if I had still put up with all the uh, inconveniences, yes. I might have continued. But I felt that uh, it was not worth it. In my perception, it was not worth it. So, because I didn't know when things would get better. Yes. At that time, it was looking so bleak. It, uh, maybe it would have been better in three years' time. Mm. Maybe you no, know, in ten years' time, you don't know. And in actual fact, after I left, you know what happened, Indira Gandhi was assassinated, you know, many mm. things happened, mm. which were not very nice in India. Unfortunate things happened. Mm. And, uh, but anyway, it is also destiny, you know, somewhere I felt, my mind, my thought process said that if I have to worry about my future, the, my children's future, and if things are so uncertain, today things are much better. You know, young uh, and many IIT students don't even go abroad. Mm. They don't go to the US mm. for studies. Mm. But in 
in 1975 to 80 when I was living in Pune, things yes. were not like that. Mm. Pretty bleak actually. Yes, there was a lot of migration to the US uh, during my student days. Yeah, yeah. Practically everyone yeah. went to study. In America my in the time, US. not much. Yes. I, I mean, because it was very early going mm. to the US. Yes. But uh, yes, you are right, in your time, almost 90% went to, or 80% left. Yes. So then, in 1978, 79, I started looking for a job in Holland or in the US. Hmm. And the management of Philips, uh, you know, they were kind enough because they had seen my work in the previous three and a half, four years. So, you come back, they said. So, I got a job. Right. So, that was... Uh, so, you have been in Holland ever since? Since 1980, uninterruptedly we have been in Holland. Oh, I see. And uh, we like that country. It's a small country. Yes. It's well managed. It's a, it's a kind of a democratic socialism. Hmm. And the, the, what I like about democratic socialist countries is that the income inequality is less. And the, there is income support for people who cannot find good jobs. Mm. So if somebody, because of whatever reason, you know, if there are 100 people, there might be 20 people in society, in any society, who are unable to get proper jobs. Mm. Now, we cannot leave them with such a state of poverty because that is in, in a developed country with a high level of uh, per capita income, like in Holland, they don't tolerate poverty. Mm -hmm. So they say, well, we have to do something. So the whole system, uh, tax structure, structure, everything else is such that on the one hand, there is capitalism, there is a market economy with proper regulations. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there is income support for people who are not yes. doing well. Yes. And then there is a skill training, reskilling mm -hmm. of the people so that they get some job eventually. Mm -hmm. And that reskilling can take six months, one year, even three years. Yeah. Oh. So the, the purpose is that there is no poverty. Of course, I don't say that that goal has been achieved. There is maybe still about three, four percent of the people who are poor. Mm. poor. But mm. relative to other countries, including the U.S., especially the U.S., we have much less poverty. Mm. Mm. We have better healthcare system, and uh, there are many things about it which you cannot make plenty of money in Holland. Mm. You can make decent money, mm. but you can't make as much money as in the U.S. Mm. So if you have somebody who's very talented and the main thing he wants to do is become a millionaire, multi-millionaire, make a lot of money, then it's not Holland the is not the place. Right. But you can earn enough to have a good life. <laughs> yeah, have you been in touch with IIT since uh, going to Holland? Unfortunately, not enough. Uh, now I regret it. But I did come in the, for the Golden Jubilee. Yes. And that was a very good experience. I, mean, I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. Those two days were well organized. You know, all, uh, I mean, I should say, all kudos or, uh, you know, applause to everybody who, who did that. It's yes. a fantastic job. Sure. Plus, in addition, I have the op opportunity to meet all my friends who came back. Yes. And some of them I met only after, I mean, that was the only time I met after we left the IIT. Yes. So that is, uh, it was great, uh, great yes. fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I should have come on the tw for the 25th anniversary mm. because I was informed about it. Mahadevan or Srinivasan, one of them had informed. And for some reason I didn't come. I can't remember. Right. But if I had come, I would have I would have felt better. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you make mistakes and then you regret it. <laughs> yeah. True. But it would have been fun if I had come, really. Yeah. So, so am I, have I taken too much time? Yeah, that is just fine. Thank uh, you very much, sir, yeah, for yeah. Uh, having participated. Sure, sure, sure. No, I loved it. And maybe I talked a little bit too much. <laughs> no, it was just fine. <laughs> Thank you again. Again, sure. Thank you. I would like to first thank uh, Mrs. Mamta Dash and Mr. Kumaran, head of the Heritage Center, for uh, making it possible for me to uh, add a few things to the interview which was taken of me uh, at the Heritage Center a few months back. The reason I am doing this is because uh, I forgot to say a few things. And I would like to complete the interview by saying these few things. Uh, as far as my career in Holland is concerned, starting from 1980, um, I started as a manager of a small group of six engineers and then moved up as uh, the general manager of a large chip manufacturing facility. Uh, in fact, the second largest uh, within Philips worldwide in Holland. And then I was further promoted as a vice president of industrial strategy and operations uh, within the 
semiconductor division of Philips. Um, at the time, I had gone to Holland in 1980. Uh, there were not too many Indians, and so I did uh, uh, need I did need to break the glass ceiling, since uh, the Dutch management of uh, Philips uh, were not familiar with uh, Indians to that extent as they are now. Um, in the meantime, there are many Indians who have come to Holland. They are all uh, highly qualified professionals in different disciplines as engineers, IT professionals, finance and accounting professionals, uh, program managers, and you name it. And you now uh, have uh, uh, no glass ceiling up to a very high level. In fact, the chief financial officer of Philips Electronics at, at this moment is of Indian origin and uh, his background is uh, chartered accountancy. Also the chartered accountancy degree uh, qualification which was not very much recognized uh, when I first went to Holland is now very much appreciated as one of the best uh, accounting qualifications in the world and there are many many chartered accountants in uh, Holland besides of course many engineers and IT professionals. There are also uh, all, all the universities in, in Holland offer master's degree and PhD programs in the English language. So much so that some of the top universities have 500 to 800 Indian students doing master's degrees and PhD degrees in engineering, in maths, physics, yeah, and in different dis other disciplines. There are also many universities which offer uh, high quality uh, business uh, programs like MBA and a Doctor of Business Management. In all these universities, uh, the programs are, are all in English and in some universities and quite a few of them, there are also bachelor's degree programs in engineering and in business administration. The tuition fees in Holland are a lot, lot less than in the US, though the quality of education within every university in Holland is comparable to the top 20 universities in the US. As a consequence, I, I do notice that uh, there are many students uh, who are now coming to Holland for their further studies and uh, I hope that this will continue. In so, so far as social life is concerned, uh, there are Indians of coming from all the states and that has made it also very interesting to live in Holland. Finally, the work life balance in Holland is much better than in most countries. The health insurance is of uh, the world-class quality and the overall quality of life is one of the best in the world. Um, the happiness index measured by the United Nations in, uh, of our people living in different countries uh, has uh, resulted in the conclusion that the Scandinavian countries and uh, some other countries plus and then the Netherlands are the best countries as far as the happiness level with which people are living there. Um, these were the things which I wanted to say to, because it is not always known to uh, many Indians who are living uh, in different parts of the world, especially in India. The opportunities for top quality professionals who have already worked in India are very good there. The company sponsors uh, the, these people who've, who have uh, good qualifications under special visa considerations. And these visa <clears throat> are such that uh, within five years after arriving in Holland, if they perform well, a uh, uh, top professional can get permanent residence in Holland. And if he chooses to get the, the citizenship of Holland, he can also get the citizenship after five years of stay in Holland. The only requirement is uh, before he gets the citizenship, he has to pass, he or she has to pass a simple Dutch language test. Majority of the Hol uh, young people in Holland speak English. Uh, in my time, the people of my generation understood English, but not all of them could speak it fluently. Today, uh, everybody is learning English in high school, and m majority of them are watching English language programs and all the younger people who are people, uh, let's say, be below 50 can speak and uh, uh, understand English very, very fluently. These are the things which make life in Holland very interesting. 
I thought I would add this for the benefit of those who may not know these things. Thank you very much.